everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums. We are going to jump right into a quick project share. I'm going to show you how I made those little mini books that were in that bookcase. And I'll show you that again, that little diorama. So the books are one and three quarters by one and three quarters. And I made them just taking some of the papers from the cover sheet of the Midnight Potions paper collection. See on the bottom of the sheet, there are those squares. Oh, and I'm showing you a close up of this book. This one is not one and three quarters by one and three quarters. It's probably one and a half by one and three quarters. But there are those little itty bitty pictures of what's on each page. And I am just cutting the top and the bottom. I should have kept a little extra on the right hand side, but I didn't. I cut it square. That's okay. I'll show you both um, the good and the bad. I mean, why we should have kept it a little bigger. But I'm taking my squares and um, I am going to ink up the edges. But first I need to find something for the spine. So I've got a couple of pieces of paper, one with a pattern, one without. And then I'm just going to cut another piece of paper and you know how on some books you see a little embossed lines on them? Well, I got my scoreboard. Well, first, um, this little piece of heavyweight cardstock is one and three quarters by three and seven eighths. I scored it at one and three quarters, rotated it, and scored it at one and three quarters. And then I am going to grab another piece of scrap paper and I looked at this thought oh I could use the moons there's um, different moons but I ended up not using that I take one of those little spine pieces the width is one and three the length is one and three quarters the width is probably about three quarters and I put in four sets of score lines I scored it at a quarter and three eighths and then rotated a quarter and three eighths and then I grab a little bit of my gold distress paint. You could use a, a gold marker if you wanted to do this. And I just put it on those embossed lines. You know how on some books you see that? Those little lines. I don't know what they're for. But anyhow, I just added that little detail. Put some glue down on the center of my little piece of chip uh, cardstock. and just put everything down and rubbed it in. All right, now I'm going to grab one of the covers and I'm taking some walnut stain and inking around the edges just so the white core of the paper doesn't show. And I'm doing the back cover too. All right, just adding a little glue to the cover piece and putting it on. And I am taking a piece that I'll use for the back and I'm grabbing the scoreboard and I'm scoring it just so the length of it is one and three quarters and I folded it over. See here, I'm showing you a little better. I cut it down, inking up the edges again and gluing that square down onto there. But then see, I just fold over the back of it. So in retrospect, I probably should have left the front cover a little bit longer. You know, make it two inches by one and three quarters. But I mean, really, it doesn't matter. I don't think anyone's going to notice. So again, I'm inking up the edges because I don't like how that white core is showing here. I, it's still showing a little more, so I'm taking Distress uh, ink, not the ink pad, just some Distress ink, because it's a little bit more concentrated, and just putting it on there. I think part of the problem is my ink pad needs replacing. Okay, now don't freak out, but I am taking an old Bopsy Twin book, and I am going to cut up the pages. Two reasons for this. The Bobsy Twin book is already falling apart when I purchased it at a flea market. And number two, I know there's no words in here. 
that's going to offend anyone. So, I mean, I would hope there's nothing in a Bobsy Twin book. So I am cutting it. I think the first ones I did cut one and three quarters by one and three quarters. But the later ones I decided to make a little bit smaller and cut one and five eighths by one and five eighths. I do like having on the outside edge of the book um, plain paper. You'll you can see the the writing inside. Like if I were to cut that page and I'm cutting over the writing, you can see it. Um, coming sort of through. So I'm just trying to make sure there is a clean white edge for where opposite the spine is going to be. So here I'm cutting it down. I probably have about four pieces of uh, the book here. And why am I using a book instead of just using plain paper? I don't know. I don't know. I just thought it would be a little more authentic, but there's no reason why you couldn't just use plain paper or better idea, use some heavier paper like watercolor paper. That way you don't need nearly as many pieces. And if you use plain paper, then you could even write in it. But I am um, using clips on both sides. I made sure it was pretty straight on the edge and I'm adding some of my liquid adhesive a bunch of it, a lot, not dripping, but covering it real well. And then I'm taking a piece of chipboard and just burnishing in that glue into the page. So it sort of seeps in a little bit more than just surface deep. And I'm going to let that dry. I'm happy with that. I've done another one. Now this one I decided after I glued it to take some of that gold distress paint and ink up the edges. You ever see books where the outside it has gold on it? I thought that was pretty. It didn't really give me the, the bang for the buck. It sort of looked brownish, not metallic gold. I think because the pages were not cut all perfectly straight. But you know, it was, it was an experiment that this whole thing is an experiment. So I am making sure everything is glued tightly. Now I'm just going to take some glue and put it on the front cover, the spine and the back cover and take my little front page, back page and put it together. I think I probably could have used a couple more pages on here because the, the book's pretty thin, um, but it's, you know, not a big deal. All right, I'm taking this cover. I had used a piece of score tape to put close to where the spine is. I'm just cutting the paper down here. And I liked that a little better rather than just use the glue. The score tape um, just held on a little better. Now I'm covering, putting the rest of the cover on. Taking off the score tape, putting glue on this time, and putting it right up against the spine and folding over that back piece. See, I like that. I'm gonna add some more ink. Again, I don't like the white core of the paper showing through. So I'm inking it up. All right, I'm going to add a little more glue to the spine. And this time I'm just trying to put the spine right into where the cardstock is. And then I will add glue to the inside front and inside back cover. Make sure that's in straight. Squeeze it a little bit. And burnish. You know, really all the work is done for you because it, it looks like a book just cutting out the paper. That's why it came to mind. And it wasn't just me. Oh, I'm putting some, um, some cardboard 
so when I put my clips on, it won't damage the paper. Apparently, uh, Tiffany from the design team also had that same idea by looking at the cover that we should make books out of it. So, great minds think alike. All right, here I'm taking that decorative piece and using that for the spine. I put it down and then I try to fold the paper and then I realize, yeah, this it's not centered the way it needs to be, so I have to move it over a little bit more. I'm grabbing my scoreboard here and I am going to score where that spine is and burnish a little more. Here's my cover. Here's my score tape. And I'll put some score tape on the back cover. I'm sorry that I'm out of frame here. I'm just taking my uh, craft knife to cut off the excess score tape. All right, adding the glue. And there we go. I mean, really, there's not much to making this, but none of this is really it's any different than what I've done before. So cutting, I'm going to leave you. I think the tedious part um, is cutting. I will tell you, the pages maybe to go try a different paper. I think and that's I why I just grab four or five at a time. You won't need as many try to make sure they were exactly you one and three quarters, quarters but one and three quarters. Four. So that is what I have squared. for you today. I um, did have some fun with making a little bookshelf. Um, so, this yeah, is a little time, diorama scene. The top of it has got that white blob. Is, I like this method of putting in just putting hot the spine in first, in, but it just sort of melded all together. Because then you make sure the it's frame nice and on the back is a Tim Holtz die that I painted with gold. It doesn't matter if you add it added to the cover or and that little added picture to the book. came I think from a, of one, half a dozen another. I think it's from Midnight Ride paper collection from Country Craft Creations. The little skeleton's a little bit small, but you, okay. you sort of get the idea. Good to me. Let's and close that it is up. what I have for you today. I hope you will go ahead and make a couple of these mini books. I'm if you end up writing together. inside or doing something fabulous, I'd love to know. I'm pushing it but in. Just I hope you enjoyed sure this today. It's straight. And have I a fabulous day. I see some of that white day. pour showing through, so I'm covering it up. And I am going to take. Um, my little clip and hold those. I just let it dry 15 minutes, half an hour. It doesn't have to dry a long time. <laughs> I'll try it again. And the frame came from a uh, Tim Holtz die, an embossing die. And the little uh, witch with the orange background was from another Country Craft Creations paper. I think that was a tag. It just went right into the frame with no problem. So I will be adding more books to this bookshelf as I go. I think the little skeleton needs to grow a little before he can reach all the books. But that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this or process video on how I made books using the cover from the Country Craft Creations Midnight Potions. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fabulous day.